What's up guys? My name is Jared Pomerantz and I'm a third year electrical mechanical engineering student here at Rochester Institute of Technology. And my name is Isaac Vasquez and I'm a third year mechanical engineering student here at RIT. Today we will demonstrate a detailed step-by-step -step instruction on how to program a six-axis IRB120 ABB robot to complete a pick-and-place operation using three objects. Using rapid programming, we will show you how to create a function that uses matrices and offsets to complete the pick-and-place procedure. Throughout the video, we will show you how to maneuver the robot and use the teach pendant, as well as create a tool frame. After that, we will then demonstrate how to operate and set up individualized work object frames, teach and set points, and operate the gripper and defector. Lastly, we'll connect the robot to Robot Studio and complete the pick and place procedure. Before we do anything, we must define our tool frame. In order to do that, we will use this as our referencing point. Following the three point method, we record three points one above here, offset at 90 degrees, and then offset at another 90 degrees, and report, record each of those three points. Within the teach pendant, we come over here, program data, tool data, and we create a new one. For the sake of this, we will name this end effector. You can leave the settings as normal and default. And then we come over here, make sure it's highlighted, go to edit and define. And being that we're using the three point method, we will change this to three. As you go to your first point, you now set it ready to modify. Returning to the jogging menu, you can come over here. Around there is pretty close, so then we could go back to the program data and modify the position. We will now repeat this to end it over here. After reaching the second reference point, we return to the program data screen and we modify point two. Now point two is saved. Now we have the last point, which would be over here. After reaching the third reference point, we now go to the teach pendant and modify the final position. After that, you press OK follow through, and it's important to change several values within the end effector. For starters, you always want to make sure that your mass represents the mass of the actual end effector. It defaults at negative one, however, that will give you an error when it's time to run your code. We could put in one for now. Following through, the center of gravity is also important, so a good rule of thumb is to change the Z1 to 90. Press OK. We now have our end effector. Once you define the three points, you can now enter into motion mode, reorientate, as well as the tool corner system. And now as you look at the end effector, notice when you move in this X, Y, Z within reorient, it moves with respect about the end effector tip. That's how you know you define the end effector correctly. Now that we have our tool frame defined, the next step is to define our work object. From this screen, you go to program data, work object data, show data, create a new work object, and for this example, we will name it plate one. Press OK. Leave these as the default settings. Press OK again. And now it is time to define our work object. For this part, we'll select the three point method. And for the first point, we will select the origin. For this, we will jog down slowly as to not damage the robot or the end effector. And gently touch down at the origin point. Then we will press modify position. The next point to define in our work object is a point in the positive x direction. So from here, the robot is jogged in the positive x. Now again, we can just lower down the robot, slow. Touching down at the point. Back at the teach pendant, press modify position. From here, we'll modify our final point, which is in the positive Y. So we'll jog the robot downwards. To a point in the positive Y direction, 
press modify position. Now that all the points have been modified, we can click OK. And now plate one work object has been defined. To ensure that we're moving in the correct work object frame, we'll go back to the jogging screen, change the co coordinate system to work object, and ensure that the work object is plate one, the work object we just defined. From this, we're in linear motion mode. So as you can see, we will now more easily be able to jog in the positive X and positive Y directions. Repeating the same procedure that we used to define the plate one work object, repeat the same steps for plate two work object. And this is so that way we can easily maneuver between both work objects while performing our pick and place procedure. This can be seen from the jogging screen. You change your active work object from plate one to plate two. Press OK. Leave the motion mode as linear and make sure that your coordinate system is set to work object, which in this case it is. And if we look at the plate two work object, now we can effectively um, jog the robot in the positive X and positive Y directions, as well as the positive, positive Z and negative Z. This will allow, again, for easier mobility within the two work objects. After defining both work object frames, we are now going to teach the robot and save three positions. The first would be a safe position in space away from the objects. Then within the plate one work object frame, we're going to save a position at this object labeled it A1. Similarly, in the plate two work object frame, we're going to save a position at this object labeled it B1. Within the teach pendant, go to program data, rope target we're looking for, show data, new, and for the state positions, we can name it SP1. Okay. And looking at the robot, this is a decent location where it's away from the work object. So right away, we can just edit, modify position, now the work object is saved. Going back into jogging, you wanna make sure we go return to the plate one work object as we're now going to save a point right next to there. Within the plate one work object, we located a point that is in a good position so that if I were to close the grippers, grab the object, if I let go, it saves it. Once you're in this location, return the program data, new this we could call it a1 leave everything as it is edit modify repeating the same process we now enter play to work object okay and move to configuration where we can pick up that point so lastly we are now in the position that we can use to pick up the final point to test it again, we'll close the gripper and reopen it. This position, return the program data, new, and we will label this B1. Leave the settings as they are, edit, modify position. We have now saved the three main positions we need for the code. And lastly, all it is to do, connect this to Robot Studio so that now we can perform the code and write the code using mere offsets. In this portion of the video, we will demonstrate the backend rapid programming needed to complete the pick and play sequence. After you start up Robot Studio and you connect the program itself to the controller of Robot, the following data will be implemented into the module. These are things that we have defined within the robot using the teach pendant. This includes the tool data of the gripper, both work object frames, plate one and plate two, and the three rope targets we have defined, B1, A1, and the safe position. After that, for the rest of the code, everything will need to be manually programmed. In this first portion, we identify the matrices and variables used throughout the program. This includes the wait time delay of a half second that will be used after the robot has picked up the object, essentially closing the gripper, and placed the object, essentially opening the gripper. From there, we have our X offset matrix and our Y offset matrix. The plates used in this 
picking place operation are three by three in which each slot is 30 millimeters away from each other. That is in the X direction and the Y direction. Hence why within our matrix, we have values that are 30 away from each other. After that, we then identified the current index of our X offset matrix and our Y offset matrix. And lastly, we identify our count variable. After that is now time to begin labeling the function and include the variables needed. Essentially within here, you are going to write a program in which the robot will move to its desired spots and locations where it will complete one pickup from the first plate in the first slot of the first row and a place within the second plate, essentially the second work object and that for in that first row and that first spot. So to begin, we want to make sure that our gripper is in an open position. From there, we want to move the robot to the safe position at a given velocity within the first plate one work object. From there, we want to move to an offset position in the Z direction above the first pickup location. After that, we then want to move the robot down to the actual pickup location. At this point, the sides of the gripper should be along the sides of the first object. From there, we're going to close the gripper and now the gripper should close and essentially clamp along the sides of the first object. And from there, we will incorporate our first wait time delay. This will just ensure that the robot has sufficiently closed the gripper and the object is now within its, its claws. From there, we will return to this offset Z direction of the pickup point and then return to the safe position. At this place right here, the robot should be in its safe position with the object in its gripper. Similarly, we are now going to move to the place location, but an offset is Z spot. From there, we're going to move the robot down to its place position, which now should be within the first slot of the first row in the plate two work object. And then we're going to reset the gripper, which essentially will open it up and drop the object into the slot. After that, we're also going to use another wait time delay. And this is just to ensure that the object has sufficiently landed within the slot. And then we're going to return to the positive Z direction offset in that place position and then return the robot back to its safe position. Essentially right here, we have defined what it would take for the robot to move one object from one plate and place it in the next plate. Now we will go through the main procedure of the code. Procedure main signifies the beginning of the main procedure in which we will call our function and execute the pick and place operation i is equal to 1 sets the index of the x offset array to the first position in the array so we can ensure that to start we will be moving with an x offset of 0 millimeters. Count is equal to 0 ensures that at the beginning of the main procedure the count variable responsible for tracking the number of pick and place iterations is 0. Next we have a for loop that will call our pick and place function, index the x offset array and increment the count variable three times. When calling our pick and place function, it is important to make sure that the syntax is correct. Here we call the function, and next we must pass in the appropriate variables. First is the pickup point, with an offset in the x direction that is set by the index of the x offset array. Each time the loop runs, it will index the X offset array and increase the X offset from 0 to 30 to 60 to 90. This is done to make sure that the three objects, each 30 millimeters apart in the X direction, get picked up and placed correctly. There is no offset in the Y or Z directions, so those values are 0. Next, we have the place point. Again with an offset in the X direction, that is set by the X offset array. The Y and Z directions don't have an offset, so those values are again zero. Finally, our work objects, starting in work object plate one and ending in work object plate two. This next line with the end four does exactly as it describes and ends the for loop. Now that the objects have been successfully picked up from plate one row one, and placed in plate two row one, we can proceed with picking from plate two row one and placing in plate one row two. This if statement 
checks to see if the for loop iterated three times and in turn that the three objects were successfully placed. If true, then the code will enter this case, reinitialize the x offset array index to one, and again use a for loop to call the pick and place function, index the x offset array, and increment the count variable three times. This, however, is a little bit different than the previous time because the variables being passed to the function are different. B1 is now our pickup point. A1 is now our place point. Plate 2 is the starting work object and plate 1 is the ending work object. Notice also that since we are placing in row 2 of the plate 1 work object, we must include an offset in the y direction as well as the x. This line ends the for loop and this line ends the if statement. Once again, we will use an if statement to check that the for loop iterated three times and place the objects correctly. The index of the x offset array is reinitialized to one and a for loop will again be used to call the pick and place function, index the x offset array and iterate the count variable. This section of code will pick the objects up from the second row of plate one and place them in the second row of plate two. This can be shown by the variables passed into the function. A1 is our pickup point. This Y offset shows that it's from the second row. B1 is our place point. And again, the Y offset shows that it's in the second row starting in plate one work object, ending in plate two work object. Again, you have the end for and end if statements. Similarly to the previous section of code, an if statement checks that the for loop iterated three times, bringing the count variable to nine. If true, the code will enter this case and use the for loop again to call the pick and place function, index the x offset array and iterate the count variable. This section of code will pick the objects up from the second row of plate two and place them now in the third row of plate one. This can be shown by again, the pickup point being B1, the Y offset showing that it is the second row, the place point being A1, but now the Y offset is J plus one, signifying the second position of the Y offset array. The starting work object is plate two and the ending work object is plate one. Again, you have the end for and end if lines. Lastly, this if statement will check that the count is 12 and if true, call the pick and place function, index the X offset array and iterate the count variable within this for loop. This section of code will pick the objects up from the third row of plate one and place them in the third row of plate two, completing the pick and place procedure. This break statement stops the program execution once the pick and place procedure is complete. And that is our code. If you want to download this code or review it more, you can access our code on either Isaac's or my GitHub which will be included in the description. Now let's see this code in action. And that is all. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this is very informative. I hope from this you guys can all sort of knowledge know how to write a program to teach a robot how to set up a pick and place orientation, write the code and integrate it throughout. And who knows, maybe after this you can write a code to make your robot dance like a robot. <laughs> If you like this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.